What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. We are back yet again bringing you guys some more competitive VGC double battles for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl. In today's video, we're going to be showcasing this hyper offensive team that features one of the strongest Pokemon in the game, Porygon Z. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content at any time, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, Come on, yo. I know you guys want to subscribe to the channel. All you got to do is scroll down a little bit and click that big red subscribe button. So seriously, shout out to all my subscribers. You guys are amazing. But getting started with this team preview right here, we have the one and only Porygon C. And like I said, one of the strongest Pokemon in this game due to its ability, which is adaptability. And what it does is it powers up moves of the same typing as the Pokemon. So any stab moves, which will be normal moves for Porygon C, will be double damage double damage which is ridiculous pair us up with the item that we're using the choice specs it's just ggs this pokemon can one tap anything pretty much anything i'm not going to say anything but pretty much anything it can one tap it take it out one shot and just get moving on throughout the battle nature for this pokemon is going to be modest to give it another special attack boost and evs are obviously going to be special attack and speed because this thing is just here to hit hard and outspeed pokemon left and right Move set for this guy is going to be Hyper Beam and Tri Attack, both for our stab moves, and then we have two amazing coverage moves with Ice Beam and Thunderbolt. Cannot wait to use this Pokemon and just showcase it to its fullest potential. Next Pokemon on the squad is going to be one of the best physical attackers in the game, and that is going to be Garchomp. We have a fairly normal move set with him with EQ, Dragon Claw, Protect, and Sword Stance setup. It just works too well. I was just like, yo, we gotta be rocking out with that move set. It's just too good on the Garchomp. But EVs are gonna be attack, speed with the rough skin ability. Nature's gonna be Jolly to give it another speed boost. And then the item that we are holding is going to be the Yacht. Berry. I was like contemplating whether to give this thing the Life Orb or the Yachi Berry, but I was just like, yo, let's go with the Yachi Berry. We haven't really showcased it in any of our uh, videos yet, but it really helps out Garchomp with ice moves. It lets him actually soak up one ice move, which is pretty good. Actually, it depends on what Pokemon's out there, but most of the time with that Yachi Berry, it can soak up one ice move and keep him in the battle just a little bit longer. Next Pokemon on the squad is going to be another great physical attacker, and that is going to be Infernape over here. We gave this thing the Life Orb. This thing's rocking with the Jolly Nature. Same EVs as the Garchomp with the Blaze ability. And then this thing has the moveset of Fake Out for Flinches, Close Combat, and Flare Blitz, both for heavy stab moves and U turn to actually pivot out and swap out of the battle. Fourth Pokemon on the squad is going to be our Tailwind user Crobat. And when I was building this team, I was kind of sitting here, I was like, yo, I need a Tailwind user. And I kind of want to go into Murkrow because it did have Prankster, give it the Focus Ash, kind of use a cool Pokemon like that. But then I was just like, yo, I need something to cover Fairy. And Crobat actually fit it perfectly because, you know, it's Poison type, can cover Fairy, and it has Tailwind at the same time. So I was just like, yo, Crobat's looking good. Great Pokemon all around. You guys already know about that. But this thing's moveset is going to be Tailwind, Cross Poison, Brave Bird, and Taunt. Fairly normal moveset that I like to use for my Crobats. EVs are going to be all over the place. We're fully invested in attack. We have Summon Defense, Summon Speed, Summon Special Defense, and Summon HP. Basically everything except for Special Attack. Inner Focus has their ability, Nature's going to be adamant, so we hit harder on the physical attacking side, and our item is going to be that Eye Papa Berry to give us some HP when we fall below 1 4th HP for Crobat. Fifth Pokemon on the squad is going to be a great bulk and a great distracting mo distraction mod, which is going to be Clefable, Leftovers as its item, so you know, we're going to get HP at the end of every single turn. Nature's going to be bold to make it a little bit more defensively bulky. EVs are going to be HP, Defense, and Special Defense with that Unaware ability, which is phenomenal. I really do like that ability all around. And then this thing is rocking out with a moveset of Follow Me, Moon Blast, Calm Mind to get that Special Defense and Special Attack boost and Safeguard to protect us from any status condition. Final Pokemon on the squad is going to be a great special attacker. It's going to be the one and only Rotom Wash. We got Thunderbolt, we got Hydro Pump, Nasty Plot and Protect. Great moveset for this guy. EVs are just straight special attack and speed with the Levitate ability. Modest Nature to give it a nice little special attack boost. And finally, the item is going to be obviously that Citrus Berry. But that is the team preview. If you guys do want to see any of these Pokemon stats, check down the description below. There will be a Poke Pace with everything you guys need to know. Moves, items, EVs. Just go check it out if you want to know anything about the team. But without further ado, let's hop onto that ladder. Look to get some wins with this adaptability Porygon Z team. Hopping into our first battle for today's video. Hopefully we can get Porygon Z rocking and grab ourselves a win here in battle number one. We're going up against a pretty cool team. He has a uh, Surskit. I'm going to guess that's Swift Swim Surskit. He also has Probopass, Chadot. Uh, what is that? I totally forgot that deer's name. I cannot remember the deer's name, but then he has Milotic and Raichu with Lightning Rod. So pretty cool team. I wonder what he's doing with it. Because they're all level 100, so it definitely has some team synergy. Hopefully we get to use it and hopefully we get to kind of counter up on it. But uh, I'm going to go Porygon Z right off the rip. I just think Porygon Z works super, super well up against a lot of these Pokemon besides Probot Pass. But I kind of really like where we're sitting here. We're going to go Crobat, try to take speed for this battle. And then, hmm, definitely want Rotom. I feel like Rotom works well, but I just have to watch out for Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod definitely could be scary. It definitely could be scary, but Rotom just does work on a lot of these Pokemon. And then finally, our last Pokemon, I kind of want to go Infernape or Garchomp. Definitely got to have a big old physical attacker on the squad. But I'm trying to think of who I should go in with. 
I'm thinking Infernape could be a little bit better in a lot of these situations. So I think I'm going to bring Infernape. I think I am going to bring Infernape because we have Rotom to cover this water Pokemon. But yeah, yeah, we're going to do that because we know Milotic probably has that ice move. We do have the Yachi Berry, but I just like Infernape. I just like Infernape. We have close combat. Can do some big stab damage with that. Plus, with that life form, it's going to be great. And we also have Fake Out with him, so we can flinch later in the match. But he's going to end up leading Milotic and Chad Eye. And Shiny Chad Eye. Yo, that thing is looking amazing. That thing is looking amazing. But we're going to lead our Crobat and our Porygon. And how should I play this one? How should I go after this? I have a lovely little Porygon. I could drop a Hyper Beam, but I do not think that's the play. I do not think that's the play. I think we are just going to... Oh, mm, I could go into Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt could work really good with that Choice Spec. But Tri-Attack might actually do more. I'm thinking Tri-Attack would do more, right? I mean, super effective, but actually, no. Thunderbolt would do more, but I think Tri-Attack will be enough damage. So I'm actually just going to go into a Tri-Attack onto the Chat Out, and we're going to set up a Tailwind. Even though I don't think we need a Tailwind, I might just taunt up onto the... Uh, I'm actually just going to taunt up onto the Milotic. Just so it doesn't put me to sleep, just so it doesn't coil and all that good stuff. Let's go taunt with that. He's going to go with a Parting Shot. Chat Out, you son of a biscuit. He's going to lower my special attack. What you mean? Lower my special attack. We're still going to be able to hit pretty hard, but maybe not get our one taps in. He's just parting shot out of here. But let's see who he goes into. Maybe he's going in the lightning rod. That could definitely be an option. That could definitely be an option for him. So let's just see what he does. We know he's rocking with fake out with the Raichu. So if he goes into that, we're going to have to watch out for that. But I wouldn't be surprised to see that. That could be a great play. He's going to go into Standler. That's the deer's name. That is the deer's name. And yo, that thing shiny looks amazing too. Look at that. It's all green. It has Intimidate. Wow. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I did not know that thing's an Intimidate user, but that's not affect your Porygon. See, we're special attacking, and Crobat is has inner focus, so it ain't touching him. It ain't touching him. Tom's gonna come out here on the Milotic, and we're gonna go straight for a try attack even though we're minus one. Still should be able to do a nice little chunk of damage. Look at that, dude. Yo, I'm telling you, Porygon, he plays no games. He plays no games. He plays no games. This thing goes for a straight Ice Beam. Okay, that's fine. We should be able to soak that up all day. Yes, sir. And we can actually soak up another one, which is great news. Which is great news, because then our pop battery can trigger, and we can kind of just roll off from there. But, do I take a Tailwind here? I might go back in a chat out. I might go back in chat out, and there's the Raichu. There's Raichu. Fake Out is ready to roll. And I think we're fine with just setting up a Tailwind here. Wait, just go into a Tailwind and a Tri-Attack? Could definitely be our play. We have a Rotom in the back, so I kind of just want to focus down on this Raichu, and I'll set up a Tailwind here. So, yo, Porygon Z. Minus one, still one tap in Stantlers, dude. Get it out of here, dude. Porygon Z is a monster. He's going to go straight for the fake out. Obviously, into Porygon Z. It's totally fine. And this thing's orbed. Okay. So, it's an orb Raichu, which is pretty cool. But we're going to set up Tailwind so we can have speed factor. And I can take out Raichu in one shot once we get after it. Porygon Z is going to flinch. And this thing's just going to go for another Ice Beam, which I don't care if it takes out, but I don't think it is going to. Yep. 9 HP. Our eye Papa Berry is going to trigger. And we're sitting in a great position with this Tailwind set up. Okay, so from here, you know, just try attack straight down into the Raichu. Should be able to finish him off in one shot. And then try to get off some damage onto the, uh, onto the, what's it called? Onto the Milotic, right? Pretty simple play. We could go for a Cross Poison, which I am going to go for because maybe, just maybe we can get a Poison off. It'd be really good. Cross Poison is going to jump. Give me the Poison. Show it to me. No Poison, but try attacks going to fly through here. And yo, Porygon Z plays no games. He plays no game, yo. He's minus one. He's minus one on special attack, and he's one tapping Pokemon out here. He's just too good. Ice Beam's gonna fly out here, and that's gonna be GG's, dude. That's gonna be GG's. He's gonna have to throw out his chat out, who can parting shot, but you know we're gonna send a try attack his way. And I'm just gonna bring out my lovely little Rotom. My lovely little Rotom. Because now we're just sitting in the driver's seat. We are just sitting in the driver's seat. He's gonna shake off the taunt. Which is good. We actually made uh, a great play using that taunt. I just think that taunt was super, super well. I could go Rotom, but I kind of want to go Infernape. Because, you know, Infernape's cool. But, you know, dude, smart play would just be going into Rotom. But the taunt was actually a good play. Forced it to go into Ice Beams. Even though maybe it wanted to go into, like, a Hypnosis. I know it was going into Ice Beam turn one. But it was still totally fine. It was still totally fine. It just forced that Milotic not to use Hypnosis, not to use Coils, all that good stuff. But, you know, we're just going to drop another Tri-Attack in the chat out. And I'm just going to go for a straight Thunderbolt into Milotic. Just try to get off damage. We still have our lovely little Infernape in the back. And we should be thriving. We should be thriving here. Porygon Z is too good. He outspeeds Tri-Attack coming in hot, dude. Are we going to one-tap this chat out? Bro, dude, I'm telling you, this Pokemon's broken. This Pokemon is broken. It's too good. It is way too strong. He bolt comes out here. Does not finish off that Milotic, but yeah, we still have Porygon Z using our next move. He's gonna go into a Scald here, and he's gonna try to target down my Porygon Z, but yeah, this thing's soaking up. He's soaking up. That's GG's. My Porygon outspeeds. He's gonna one-tap that thing all day. Choice specs, adaptability, combine those two. 
It's over with, dude. It is over with. We used Belly Drum Azumarill in the last battle or last video for BDSP, and that was super, super strong. Using this, this might be stronger. This is super, super crazy. This is crazy. Like I said, we're minus one and we're still one tapping Pokemon. It's it's insane. We're gonna go for a try attack again. And Porygon Z picks up all four KOs, right? Yeah, he picks up all four KOs. That is broken. That is crazy. Porygon Z is overpowered. I feel bad for our opponent in that last battle. He parting shot onto me. He's like, okay, I dropped the thing special attack. We should be thriving. Nah, yo, we were one tapping left and right, getting rid of a bunch of Pokemon. But we have our, our work cut out for ourselves in battle number two. This guy's got a really strong Sun Team that features Ninetales, Venusaur, Charizard, Garchomp, Heatran, and finally Clefable. How should I go into this one? How should I play? I think we need to get Tailwind set up. So I think going straight into Crobat could be really beneficial for us. We could also go Infernape just for that fake out in turn one. It just could be really good. It could be really good, especially if he leads the Venusaur as well. I, I think we should be fine with that. Being able to fake out, set up a Tailwind, kind of get out going from there. I do like that. We definitely got to bring our Porygon Z in the back end. Has Ice Beam, has Thunderbolt, has a lot of moves that can really uh, take out a lot of these Pokemon. And then finally in the final spot, do I go in with Garchomp? I mean, Garchomp could be good, but if it comes down to him and the Clefable, I really don't like that situation. But we could go Rotom. But, dude, Garchomp's just good. I really do like Garchomp, so I'm thinking I'm going to go Garchomp here. We have EQ for that Heatran. We have Dragon Call for his uh, for his Garchomp. And we can do a lot of work on the other Pokemon. So I'm going to pop out with it. I'm going to pop out with that thing. Let's lock it down. Let's lock it down. Look for ourselves back-to-back -back wins for today's video. But we have Porygon Z in the back in this instance. So maybe we can kind of get some Pokemon down and then just bring Porygon Z in here and finish up the battle. It could definitely go in that way. But he's going to go uh, he's gonna go Garchomp and Clefable, which I'm pretty cool with. I'm going to fake out the Garchomp and just go into a straight Cross Poison. Or do I set up a Tailwind here? I could definitely set up a, a Cross Poison or hit up on a Cross Poison, but I think Tailwind is going to be the play. Tailwind, you know, just drop a straight fake out onto... Uh, this Garchomp, so it doesn't set up a Sword Stance. I do like that turn. So, Fake Out's gonna pop here. We're gonna make that thing flinch, and we're gonna see what Clefable's going for. Hopefully, like, a follow me or something. He does, yo. So, big waste of a turn. Big waste of a turn for us. I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. So, we get off Tailwind. We have speed all day. I could just go into a close combat, but I'm thinking of just U-turn pivoting here. I'm thinking of just cross poising and U-turn pivoting. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, go into my U-turn and just save my boy for another turn. So he's going to go into the follow me yet again. And I think he's just going to be setting up. I think he's just going to be setting up. He's probably going for a sword dance. Or he might be going for a dragon fall. Let's see how this one plays out here. u turns going to poke. That's some nice chunky damage. And Crobat should at least be able to bring this thing down to half with this uh, cross poison. Should be able to do some good work. But should we swap into our Porygon here? Could be a great Porygon turn. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. We have Tailwind set up. His Garchomp isn't going to one tap on my Porygon. So I really do think we're thriving here. I really do like where we're sitting. Cross Poison gonna poke, and this thing has the berry. This little biscuit has the berry. Cross Poison gonna do some damage, and another Cross Poison should be able to take that out. I really do like where we're sitting. I really do like where we're sitting here. He's gonna go for a Sword Dance, and there's a setup. Okay, so we have speed all day. If a Cross Poison takes out this uh, Clefable, then a Tri Attack can kind of go over there and finish off that Garchomp, and I really do like that. I really do like that. So let's see what we should do here. Let me see these speeds. That's what I want to check. I want to check these six speeds. So, this thing is sitting 142, and this thing's 152. So, obviously, my Crobat Wild Speed first, which is wonderful. And I think Cross Poison takes this thing out, right? I'm going to say Cross Poison takes that out, and then we just try attack straight across onto this Garchomp. Could be sitting in a really good spot here. If this Cross Poison KOs, we are going to just sweep this battle. So, he goes to the follow me. Cross Poison's going to poke. Give me the KO. Give me the KO. Oh, my God. No. No. Poison pokes here. We need that. Hopefully, he's going after my Crobat. I'm hoping he's going after my Crobat. Try attacks on a poke here. Do not go after my PZ. Do not go after my PZ. Please. Leave my PZ alone. He goes for a rock slide. Mm. Should be able to soak, right? PZ soaks. Okay, that's fine. PZ soaks. So we have a lot of speed going on. We have Tailwind set up. I could just go into my own Garchomp here. Which I think we're going to do. I think we go straight into our own Garchomp. Just for the sheer fact is, we can outspeed him with his Tailwind up, and then PZ can I kind of go after his Ninetales here. I really do like this. I really do like this. He could be Sash, but it is what it is. It is what it is. We still have our Infernape in the back with Fake Out. Could work really, really well. Let's just see what this dude's play is. So again, we're just going to go straight into a Dragon Call here. Dragon Call is definitely a play. Should be able to take that out, no problem. And then just uh, going into a Tri Attack onto this Ninetales. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. He's going to go for a Protect. That's fine. And hopefully we can just get off this... uh. Let's try attack. 
Go ahead and call. It comes through here. It gets blocked. And come on, try attack. Do him dirty. Hopefully, this thing's not Sash. But I could see it being Sash. Try attack coming in hot. Take him out. Big old damage, PZ. Big old damage. This thing ends end up being Sash. And I think he's just going to go for a Heat Wave here. Right? Yeah, Heat Wave. PZ's going to go down. PZ, no! Leave my PZ alone. Leave my PZ alone. And we get burned. Yo, come on. Come on. What you mean? What you mean? That's a little whack. That is a little whack. Tailwind does end up petering out. And uh, Infernape's going to come have to come back out here. So Infernape comes back out. He might protect the Ninetales. Definitely an option. But I think in this case, you know, we just... uh. Hmm. What do we do here? I think we just go here. We just go into a fake out onto the Garchomp. Because we know Garchomp can't protect and he's our big threat. Ninetales going to protect. Great call by me. Great call by me. Great call by me. We're going to fake out onto this lovely Chomp. And I don't know if Dragon Claw is going to be able to pick up the KO here. Like I said, we're burned. We are burned. We don't like that one bit. Dragon Claw comes out here. And no, yo, we are doing like no damage here. We're doing like no damage here. Not one single damage. So Dragon Claw is definitely going to have to poke onto this Ninetales. And then, you know, we are just going to have to get after this thing with like a... Uh, we could go for a U-turn. Or we can go for a Flare Blitz. But close combat, probably our player. Let's go into a combat here. Infernape does outspeed. We're going to be able to take out Garchomp. Get him out of here. Garchomp should be able to outspeed here. But it's going to be super close here. If he has Venus run the back end, we're in some trouble. We are in some trouble. We are in trouble. Let's see. Let's see this dude's play. I mean, we might not be in trouble, but it will be able to outspeed us. Dragon Claw is going to fly through here. Ninetales is gone. Ninetales is gone, yo. This is a solid battle. This is a great battle. Our PZ was this close to just coming in and sweeping. Because, you know, if we would have taken out with the Cross Poison, it would have been over. And then, of course, he had the Focus Ash. Focus Ash definitely saved him. He's going to go into his Venusaur. This is going to be his final mod. And how should we play this one? Or about Swords Dance? Oh, yeah, we could Swords Dance. I'm going to Swords Dance. Just get some attack buff onto my Garchomp. Because we know he's going to want to target down my Infernape, right? He's going to want to target down my Infernape. He's going to go straight for a Sludge Bomb here. Can you eat this up? We do not. Oh, dude, that's tough. That's real tough. That's real tough. Infernape's going to drop. And we really needed him. So Swords Dance is going to poke. And what do we do from here? What do we do from here? We got to be able to soak up a shot. I could protect this turn. I mean, we might have to protect next turn. We might have to protect next turn, but our best bet would be actually going into this EQ. It does a bit more damage. But if I can soak up a shot and maybe protect and end the sun, that could be good for us. He's going to go for a Giga Drain, which we should be able to soak pretty well here, right? Us is tough. We can't protect now. We cannot protect now, can we? Is this even going to do half? Oh my god, dude. If we didn't get burned... Sunlight, oh, Sunlight fades now. Oh, we, we, I think we got this one, unless he protects. Actually, if he protects, we still might have this one. Yo, Garchomp clutching? Garchomp clutching? This guy quit, yo. This guy turned off his switch. That's hilarious. We would have had this one. Maybe this guy didn't have protect, but even if he did, yo, the burn would have not killed us. It's not doing 14 damage. We're thriving. We outspeed. We hit him one more time and go 2-0. Yo, let's get it, guys. Let's hop into our third and final battle. Try to showcase this team a little bit more and showcase Porygon Z yet again. I honestly didn't think we were going to be able to win that last battle, but Sword Stance with Garchomp was the right play. We were able to soak up a Giga Drain and make that dude quit in the long run, but we're hopping into our third and final battle, and we're just dominating with this team right now. We're just thriving out with it, showcasing Porygon, showcasing pretty much everybody on the squad. It's really well. It's working really well for us, but we're hopping into our third, looking for that perfect record, going up against a pretty cool team. It's got Cresselia, Milotic, Arcanine for Intimidate, Fake Out, Guts, Hariyama probably, and then he has Scizor and Claydol. So he might want to set up a Trick Room. And that could be a problem for us. So I might just want to go Crobat here just so we can taunt and kind of get after it that way. We outspeed pretty much everybody. We could go Infernape and potentially U-turn out into uh, Porygon C. And maybe just get Fake Out right off the rip. Could work really well. So I think going in with Crobat alongside with uh, Infernape is really good. We're going to bring PZ in the back. And then final Pokemon, I'm thinking going Clefable. I'm thinking of going Clefable. Or I could go Rotom. Rotom could work well here. Yeah, I might go Rotom. Like you, I want to go into Clefable because we haven't used them in the video yet, but... But he also has Scizor. Scizor's kind of scary. And you know what? I am going to go Rotom here. You guys already know what Clefable does. There for to follow me. There to kind of just protect the Porygon Z. But yo, we definitely need Rotom here. He has the Milotic. He has the Arcanine. We got to be able to take it out somehow. So we're going to pop out with that guy and get rocking out from there. But let's see who this guy leads. I think he's going to lead to Cresselia. Try to probably pop a Trick Room. Maybe that and the Hariyama. And if that's the case, I'll just fake out the Hariyama. We outspeed and then we get after Cresselia. So he goes in with these two. Okay, that's pretty cool. He has competitive. We have inner focus. He's going to intimidate up on our lovely little uh, 
our lovely little Infernape. But in that case, I'm just going to fake it out and then go into a U-turn and pivot into my PZ, which could work really well. So do I even Tailwind right off the rip here? I think we just taunt. I think we just taunt and fake out onto this uh, this Arcanine, right? I think that's our play. Taunt that Milotic like we did in battle number one. We just can't allow Milotic to kind of set up, get some coils or Hypnosis is rolling. So taunt is definitely the call. And I don't mind going into a taunt, even if it's going into attacking move. It just it just secures me the satisfaction of this thing not setting up and doing us dirty. Because everyone knows if a Milotic can get set up, it's really tough. It has coil, and then coil obviously gives that accuracy boost, and then hypnosis can just can just control the battle just like that. So by going in this way, I really do like where we're sitting. Then I can just pivot out and get rid of my Intimidate with my uh, Infernape. And we're just rolling strong. We're just rolling strong. And then at that point, we just get out PZ. And PZ is going to be able to dominate. Milotic's going to protect. That's fine by me. That's fine by me, and I wonder what Arky's going for. I do wonder what Arky's going for. We are faking him out, so we can't really go for anything. And we kind of just waste a turn. We kind of just waste a turn. So we'll pivot out. We'll go for another taunt, I think. Or do we tailwind set up? What's my call here? We might not even want to go into a taunt here now. No, he probably knows that we're going into a taunt. So I might just want to go into a cross poison. Try to get off this poison and just U-turn out. And I'll U-turn out into Milotic because we know that that slot can't protect. So we'll make the safe call here. So I originally want to kind of just U-turn into the uh, Arcanine, but if I get out PZ, we can totally just knock the thing out in one shot. No problem. No problem whatsoever. So we could be going for a burn. I could definitely see like a will o -Wisp coming through onto my, my Crobat, which could do us dirty. I would not like that one bit. But we know we outspeed. So if we survive this turn, I'll set up a Tailwind the next turn just so I can secure my Pokemon outspeeding in the late run. But he has a rather slow team, so we might not even want to waste a turn going into Tailwind. But this dude's thinking. He's thinking, he's like, yo, what do I do? Gene's got a pretty tough team in front of us. U-turn's gonna poke. Let's get out my lovely PZ. We're gonna deal some damage there. Use a little bit of on our life orb, but swap out. Or do I swap into the uh, Rotom? I could swap into the Rotom and just save her PZ, which I think I'm gonna do. I mean, PZ could be a good call, but like, Rotom comes in here, he poses a threat to all these Pokemon. Each and every single one of them. So yeah, yo, I'm with Rotom. I'm with Rotom all day here. My original plan was just like, yo, PZ can roll out. But yo, just bringing out Rotom and saving the uh, Porygon for the back end. I really do like that. Give me a poison, though. No poison comes out here, and Willowus is going to fly. And I had a feeling about that. I don't know why. I just had a strong feeling about that. We know Milotic is rock and protect. So, what's he going to do? Here? He's going to go straight for a skull. That's cool. So, that's easy. That's easy soak ups for a Rotom. And I could Nasty Pot set up. I could Nasty Pot set up, which I might do. I might plot up. Actually, no. We're going to go straight into the water move here. We're going to go straight into the water move here and uh, set up our Tailwind. Why could you go for Cross Poison? I know we outspeed. That's our thing. I know we outspeed. And I honestly think... Uh, actually, I honestly think Milotic going to protect. So I think setting up our Tailwind now is going to be good. Let's go Tailwind. And then we're just going to drop a Hydro Pump. Because I do think Milotic protects. I think Arcanine might try to go for Snarls. But let's just see his suits play. He could swap to Arcanine. You never know. You never know. But I kind of want the Nasty Pot set up. He does withdraw the Arcanine. Son of a biscuit, man. <laughs> he withdraws the Arcanine. He's going to go into Cresselia. And uh, good thing we're setting up a nice Tailwind. I'm going to taunt that Pokemon next turn. And we're just going to fly out from there. Milotic does end up protecting. So we do make the right call. Nasty Pot could have been the call for the setup. Tailwind's going to poke. We're grabbing some speed. We have to taunt that Cresselia. Because, you know, that thing's rocking trickery. And definitely a scary little one. Hydro Pump's going to poke here. And we're going to do some damage on this. We are going to do some damage on that thing. So this thing is leftovers, but we, we got to get taunting. We have to get taunting. We have to get taunting. And I might protect my Rotom here, or I could just go into a T-Bolt. I think taunt into the T-Bolt, because we do outspeed that thing. Definitely our play. Definitely our play. Let's go here, and then, you know, just T-Bolt down. As much as I want to set up a nasty spot, we have to pose a threat onto the Milotic, now that we know that it can't protect, because it protected last turn. So we doing that. We doing that. And we're going to hope that the, uh, that the Cresselia is going for a trick, because we could taunt it, just cancel out a turn just like that. It could just be perfect. It could just be perfect. Because now that we have this Tailwind up, we cannot really afford him setting up a Trick Room. That can really solidify the battle for him. Just giving him speed, taking advantage that way. So as long as we keep the speed advantage, we should be fine with this battle and grab ourselves a perfect record. Yo, I'm loving this team. I'm loving this team. I'm really liking this team. It has such great Pokemon on it. And then a few cool Pokemon like Crobat. Crobat's like, Crobat's like not meta, but he's a little bit like below the meta line. And then you got a Pokemon like PZ, who's just great. Not a lot of people use him, and he's just super, super overpowered. <laughs> he's going to swap back into the Arcanine, go for the Intimidate, which is totally fine. Which is totally fine. Imagine if I read that. Imagine if I read that. He's going to swap there, and I think he might just swap back. He might just swap back after that, but Nasty Pot could have been the play here. 
it could have been a play Let's see what he does thunderbolt's gonna poke here yeah getting off some big damage and i'm just gonna thunderbolt into that slot again he's gonna go for a straight psychic and i think you're dead here crobat right nope crobat soaks burn is going to probably trigger the i pop a berry but i'm fine with this all day we have a taunt on that i'm gonna go for a poison i'm gonna go for some cross poisons over there and he might swap back into the milotic and if he does we're still dropping a thunderbolt on that burn's gonna poke i pop a berry should come out sir thank you burn <laughs> burn actually helped us trigger that i pop a berry you'd love to see it so we're back up to uh past half health i'm liking where we're sitting i'm really liking this we don't do cross poison because you know i'm looking for that poison and i'm just gonna go for a t-bolt just in case he swaps back into the milotic i think a t-bolt should be able to take it out regardless let's just see what he does let's see what he does dude i'm loving this i'm loving having pz in the back too because that means we can potentially just use a hyper beam and get after this hyper beam is big damage and, and usually you only want to use hyper beam on, on porygon when you're uh it's kind of like a 1v1 and you just need to kill or you know you're gonna die you just send a nice little hyper beam just send the hyper beam because obviously you have to recharge next turn so it's really not worth wasting a turn that's why tri attack is usually the main call but he goes straight into a protect we're gonna go into this cross poison here look for this nice little poison come on yo give me the poison give me a poison these guys getting burns and stuff and we can't get poisons we can't get poisons what you mean he's gonna drop another psychic oh or just an ice beam or just an ice beam and we should be able to eat that up uh burns can take us out dang it man dang it. i'm i'm wondering why he went in that maybe he thought we were gonna swap but okay i'm cool with that i'm chilling okay uh from here from here do we just bring out pz Nah, Infernape's definitely a call. Infernape is 100% a call. We go into a fake out, but who do I fake out here? I'm thinking of just plotting up, right? I'm thinking of just plotting up, faking out you. And just setting up a nasty plot? I'm liking this turn. I'm really liking this turn. We'll fake out, and we'll just start trying to do some damage on the Cresselia after this. I might U-turn out against the Cresselia. The fake out's gonna poke, you make a flinch, and we're gonna set up a lovely little nasty spot. So finally, we get off our nasty spot. We kept contemplating it turn and turn again. But let's see what this thing's gonna go for. Maybe a snarl. Let's see. What's he going for? He's gonna go for a snarl. There's a snarl. So we are still plus one, which is wonderful. And he could protect. He could protect here, which is definitely an option. So we have the nasty spot set up. We can just go straight into a T-bolt here. But I think he might protect. So we might want to double down to this Cresselia. This taunt might be shaken off here, right? If Taunt's not gone, I will not target down the Cresselia. But if it is gone, then we'll, we'll double down into it. It is gone. Okay, so let's double down into that thing. Our Tailwind's gone. We have to uh, we have to get after this thing. I could U-turn and Thunderbolt at the same time. Which might be our play. U-turn with that Life Orb alongside with a nice, lovely Hydro Pump. Should be able to take out Cresselia, right? Plus one. Nice little super effective move. We're going to go into this thing. We need to take this thing out. That's some big damage. Come on, yo. Hydro Pump. I need you to connect. I need you to connect here. I need you to connect. We're going to swap back. And if, dude, if this can work out here, we are sitting in a great spot. If we get the KO here, we are sitting in such a good spot. Even if he snarls us, we, we're thriving. We're thriving. Hydro Pump's going to go in here. It connects, yo. Give me the KO. Give me the KO all day, baby. We're plus one. We're plus one. Let's go, Rotom. All day, Rotom. Get that thing out my face. He can go for a snarl. It's fine. We already seen the power of PZ. Oh, he actually misses my Rotom. But we already seen the power of Porygon Z with snarl out. With Snarl on him. So, yo, we thriving. We are thriving here. We still have our Infernape in the back for another flinch later in the match. And it comes down to, uh, what? Is, does he still have three Pokemon left? It is going to be Scissor here. And in this case, what do we do up against this Scissor? Scissor's kind of scaring me. Try attack could come in here, but... Definitely going to try attack here. And then, you know, just go into a Thunderbolt. Into Scissor. I do like that. Let's see what he does here. Let's see what he does here. Try attack will be able to take out the Arcanine, but I think he might protect the Arcanine and just try to throw in some bullet punches. You never know. You never know. And if he does, we can just hard swap into our Infernape, which could work really good. We're just going to go straight for a try attack. He is not going for a uh, a bullet punch, which is good. Arcanine's going to drop down here. My Rotom should be able to outspeed and get off some big damage. We are plus one. Thunderbolt's going to fly. Get an after thing. And just, oh, bring that thing down to a sash. Bring it down to a sash. So, you can definitely go for a bull punch. We just have to watch out what it's going for. He's going to go for an X scissor. And Rotom soaks, dude. Rotom soaks and eats up a berry, which is wonderful. So, we might be able to eat up a bull punch. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But in this case, uh, what do we do? In this case, what do we do? Just try attacking the Milotic? 
I don't know, yo, Peach, he coming out here clutching up for us, yo. It's looking like a perfect record. Um, He might protect the Milotic, but I really don't want to bank on it because we should be fine regardless if he protects or not. So I'm just going to go into the T-Bolt here, and I am going to go into here. Battle was canceled. There it is, yo. Perfect record. Showed off Porygon Z to its fullest potential. So, guys, I forgot to mention this during the whole video, but if you guys want to send me Brilliant Diamond and Shine and Pearl double teams, send me the Poke Pace down in the comment section down below or DM me over on my Instagram page. There is a link down to my Instagram page down in the description below, and the name is right on the face cam. So, if you guys have Poke Pace or team ideas for me, definitely get them over to me. But, guys, Porygon Z is absolutely ridiculous. I'm glad we got to show off him to his fullest potential. If you guys are looking for a strong team to build, I'm telling you guys. Build a Porygon Z team. Give it the choice specs. Give it the adaptability and just go have fun with it. It dominates. It hits hard left and right. One tapping Pokemon and just controls the battle as a whole. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread some positivity today and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.